Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we are gathered today on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples, including the territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. So um, a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Um, so slides for this presentation will be available after the session. So don't worry too much about taking notes. They will be there for you. Um, so the first half of this presentation, um, or for of the session, so the presentation part will be recorded. Um, and then afterwards, we'll, after the presentation, we'll be having some breakout room activities and some discussions and Q&A. So though, those, uh, those activities in the back half will not be recorded. So if you don't feel comfortable asking your question while the presentation part of the session is still in progress and being recorded, please save your questions until after that in the unrecorded Q&A part of the session. Okay, thank you, Joby. Uh, welcome all to the Student Experience Open Instruction Workshop. My name is Abdullah Zim, and I'm a statistician with the Planning and Institutional Research Office. I'll try to keep my presentation under half an hour to allow enough time for a short activity and for question and answer. Uh, this is an outline of what we hope to cover today. Uh, we'll talk about the type of data that we collect in those uh, in the student experience of instruction surveys and what that means in terms of what we could uh, do with the data and the measures that we compute from the data. Um, in particular, the three statistics that are reported in the instructor report. Uh, finally, we'll also look at ways in which we uh, those statistics could be combined to summarize student uh, scores. Next slide, please. Um, by the end of this session, uh, we have to have a better understanding of the new metrics, uh, in particular the three statistics, interpolated median, percent favorable, and dispersion index, and also be able to use simple graphics to examine the relationship between the report to the statistics. Next slide, please. Uh, in uh, 2018, we started to transition to the new metrics. Uh, during that transition, the old metrics, the mean and the standard deviation, were reported along the new metrics. Uh, in, I think, 2019, uh, UBC made a complete switch to the new metrics. Uh, in 2021, changes were made to the six university module item questions. The modified and new questions were implemented in the fall of 2021. Uh, but these changes are uh, beyond the scope of this workshop, so I won't be talking about them, and we will be focused exclusively on the statistics in the, in, in the instructor report. Next slide, please. Um, the type of data that we collect in the student experience of intersection surveys is categorical in nature. That's to say that the student responses were captured in categories of ranging from strongly agree to strongly disagree. But these categories have sense of, sense of order. And so the data is actually ordinal because we think of a strongly agree as being higher or better than agree, which is higher than neutral. The university model item question, the six questions, the UMIs, and most faculty and department questions uh, use a five point scale. But there are some faculty questions that use seven point scale. Um, a bit uh, on the uh, scales in the next slide, please. So both scales have odd number categories, whether five or seven, and they are balanced around a neutral response. So in the case of the five point, we have two responses, agree and stronger agree, that are above or higher than neutral. These are favorable. We have two that are unfavorable, which is below neutral. And in the case of the seven, we have three uh, categories on both sides of the neutral. The methods that we will be talking about uh, apply to actually uh, this type of scale. That's uh, uh, Likert type scale with odd number uh, categories. Next slide, please. So we will take a look at a, a, a sample instructor report. Uh, this one, uh, to just, uh, I'm sure most of you either have received this report as instructors, or if you are a staff and you're working with those reports, you have seen them. But uh, just to refresh our memories, we'll just take a look at, at what's in the report, we'll take a, uh, and then we will continue with the uh, talking about uh, what's in the report. Next slide, please. So in the 
students uh, in the uh, in the structure report, uh, there is a description of the section and the structure uh, information at the top, along with the uh, the audience or the number of students in the in the in the section, and the responses received and the response rate. Uh, and the response rate is basically the percentage of the responses received uh, as a percent of the uh, of the student invited to participate in the survey. And then there is a table that's provided by class size that give the recommended minimum response rate. And uh, for example, uh, in this particular small session, this is just a test with two students, both of them respond with 100% response rate. But say if we have a class that has uh, uh, 55 students, so that would be in the class size 50 to 74, and we would require uh, at minimum 35%. Uh, we try to work with the students to increase response rates. And of course, the higher the response rate, the more confidence we have in, in the data that we, uh, in the responses. Next slide, please. Um, next, you we have in the instructor report, we have the university module questions, the six UMIs. And for each question, we have the capital N, uh, uppercase N is the number of students that were invited, in this case, two. The lowercase n is the number that responded to each question. And then we have the distribution of the responses by the five categories, strongly disagree to strongly agree. Uh, that is non applicable, which doesn't apply to the UMI questions. Then there is the interpolated medium, abbreviated as IM, dispersion index, DI, and percent favorable, which is given uh, below. And these are the three statistics that we will focus on uh, in this presentation today. Next slide, please. So uh, we will start with uh, percent uh, favorable um, in a balanced Likert type scale. The favorable responses are those that are higher than neutral. Excuse me. Um, so agree and strongly agree on a five point uh, on the five point scale. And percent favorable is the proportion of responses that are higher than neutral suppressed as a percent of the total received uh, responses. Uh, this measure is simple, it's intuitive, it's informative, and it's easy to calculate. Um, for example, if we have uh, 20 students in a section that responded to the survey, if 16 of them responded with agree and strongly agree, then the percent favorable would be 16 out of 20 or 80%. I think it is important to mention that uh, uh, in student surveys, by and large, and this is in the literature, students tend to rate their instructor favorably more often than not. So for example, at UBC, uh, upwards of 75 to 80% of all responses uh, are favorable. Next slide, please. The dispersion index, uh, this is a measure of the data spread, how variable the students' responses are. Um, and dispersion index that we use uh, range in value from zero to one. A value of zero indicate that all respondents uh, rated their experience of instruction the same, so they all use the same response. There is no variation in the data. Uh, a, a value of one is obtained when the respondent is split evenly between the two extremes, strongly agree and strongly disagree. Um, it's, uh, I think it's also worth mentioning that uh, in our UBC student experience of instruction data, dispersion index rarely exceeds 0.8. And usually such high dispersion is associated with section that did not meet the minimum uh, recommended response uh, rate. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so these are actually uh, three examples of the uh, the, how the distribution of the responses, uh, 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 which uh, yield a, a particular dispersion index. If we look at the one at the bottom of the of, the, of your screen, the, the last one, uh, here we have 60 responses. They were split evenly, 30 strongly disagree and 30 strongly agree, and that results in the maximum dispersion of one. That's at the bottom right uh, of, the, of that table. Don't worry about how it's calculated. This is just this example of how the distribution, uh, how the distribution 
uh, affect the uh, dispersion index. If we look at the one at the top, we see that the, out of the 60 responses, 40 are, are in the category of agree, 20 in the strongly disagree, uh, strongly agree. And because of the uh, the data being uh, A, it's the majority of the responses are in one category, and the next category is actually not far off from that category. We have a, a low dispersion of 0.2. In the example in the middle, we have 100 responses, and you can see that they are spread throughout the five categories, 22 strongly disagree, 27 disagree, and so on. And that results in a relatively high dispersion uh, of almost 0.8. So these are just examples of how the distribution of the responses um, uh, relate to the uh, to the dispersion index. Next slide, please. Um, before I get into the interpolated median, uh, I would like to talk about the distribution of the scores, students' scores for a given question, um, and uh, also uh, look at the median, the customary median, which is the 50th percentile. So we have two sections here. The one on the left, A, has uh, 12 student responses. Um, so one uh, response is disagree, which has a numerical score of three of two. There are six, uh, and maybe uh, if you have a highlighter, uh, this you can highlight uh, this here. So uh, there are six uh, neutral, uh, numerical value of three, and there are four agree, numerical values of four, these are the one in blue, and one five, strongly agree. Um, so the median is actually, the 50th percentile is three, which is the average of those two threes, and we have equal number of responses to the left and to the right of that median. However, if we just look at the value of the median being three, there is one response that's below that median, which is two, and there are five responses higher than the median, which is the one on the right, and so this distribution, uh, this description of the distribution relates to how we calculate the interpolated median and how we uh, how we do that. I'll explain it in the next slide. But for now, uh, I just want you to keep those two distribution in mind. The first one has one response that's less than the median, five responses that are greater than the median, and six responses that are equal to the median. The distribution to the right, B, has a median of four. Uh, there are 15 responses, still the responses that are received with a median of four. There are four responses that are below that median value, the one in red. There are two that are higher than the median value, the two fives, and there are nine that are equal to the, the median value of four. So I'll keep those two distributions, we'll work with them in the next couple of slides. Next slide, please. Um, here again, we have the two distributions. Uh, we indicate the number greater than the median by n plus. So in, in distribution A, we have five of those. And the number that's less than the median as n minus, we have one. If you look at the top, the interpolated median formula is simply the median, and we adjust it by a certain factor. That factor depends on the distribution of the scores below and above uh, and above the median. Um, uh, so this in this particular case, because we have more responses higher than the median, the median is adjusted or interpolated upwards by about three tenths of a point. So our interpolated median is 3.3. In the distribution to the right, B, there are more responses that are below the value of the median. And so the interpolate, the, inter, the median is actually interpolated or adjusted downwards by one tenth of a point. And our interpolated median in this case is 3.9. Uh, if you are interested in the interpolated median formula, how it's calculated, I, you can drop me an email. I'll share my email later, and I will send you a, a reference uh, for that. Next slide, please. So these are, the, again, the two distribution. This is just a histogram of the two distribution. Uh, we see that the two distributions are markedly different. They both have the same mean of 3.4. So the mean doesn't really uh, reflect the distribution. Uh, the first one has a percent favorable of 42%. These are the responses of four and five. There is five of them out of 12, 42%. The one on the right has 73%. If we look at the interpolated median of 3.3 and 3.9, we see that they are closely associated with the uh, percent, uh, percent favorable. So next slide, please. 
So the interpolated median, um, given that students actually read the uh, instruct, uh, experience of instruction favorably, uh, more often than not, the interpolated median is preferred to the mean or to the median for that matter, because A, it better reflects the distribution of the responses uh, better than the mean of the median. And also uh, uh, it has, uh, it's closely associated with the uh, percent favorable and by uh, uh, closely associated, uh, I don't mean uh, just a high statistical correlation. There is actually a unique relationship between the interpolated median and percent favorable, which we will get into in a minute. And those two statistics can actually be combined uh, to summarize the data uh, and present it in a tabular form or in a graphical uh, form. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the uh, this is a simple scatter plot of the percent favorable uh, and, and interpolated median. Each point represent uh, uh, this is for uh, UMI question number three. So each point represent the uh, interpolated median and percent favorable from uh, an instructor report. So each point here is actually a, 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 a section instructor a combination of a section instructor. So for, um, uh, for example, if we look at uh, the point in the upper quadrant at the bottom, uh, down here to the right, uh, we, yeah, uh, if we take, for example, an interpolated middle of 4.5 and a percent favorable of 60%, that would be represented by that point down, 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 no, same line, yeah, the last one. Yeah, so that's an interpolated middle of 4.5. So this this point here represents an instructor for this question, the students rated their experience with an interpolated middle of 4.5 and a percent favorable 60%. The relationship has a pivot point at 3.5 and 50%, such that for interpolated median values of less than 3.5, percent favorable does not exceed 50%. And for interpolated median values that are greater than 3.5, the percent favorable does not uh, is above 50 percent. 50 percent plus uh, is greater than or equal to 50 percent. And the the data is only found in those two sub quadrant. The upper left and the bottom right sub quadrant would have no data. And if we, the, another thing to notice is that the relationship is quite linear around the pivot point of 3.5. And then further from that point, they might be spread in the data. And that could be explained through the dispersion index, as we will see in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in some of the examples that we'll look at. Next slide, please. Uh, the same, uh, this is actually the same scatter plot, except this is for a seven point. Um, the methodology applies to both scales. So this is a seven point. The difference between the two is that on the x-axis, the point has shifted to 4.5. So the pivot point is actually at 4.5 and 50%, uh, as opposed to 3.5 and 50% in the case of the five-point scale. Next slide, please. So, what I have here is for the same question, for the same period, this is one academic unit, so this is one department. And again, this is a simple scatter plot of the, inter of the percent favorable and interpolated median. Again, the relationship goes through the pivot point of 3.5 and 50% with no data in the upper left and the bottom right quadrant, indicated with the red X. The red dot, uh, and maybe uh, you can point to the, Tizitash, uh, if you can point to the, no, oh, sorry, um, I thought I lost you for a minute. Uh, so the red dot uh, is actually the aggregate for the academic unit. I don't want to use the word average because I don't want people to confuse it with the, the arithmetic average, the mean. So this is the aggregate point for the, and it has an interpolated median of 4.2 and a percent favorable of 76% with a dispersion of 0.52. Now we have four instructors in that unit that I highlighted as A, B, C, and D. If we look at instructor A, 
we see that they have an interpolated median and the data is given in the table to the left of the graph. Uh, we see that they have an interpolated median of 3.9 and an 80% favorable rating with uh, relatively lower dispersion of 0.35. If we relate that to the aggregate, we see that the 3.9 is slightly below the aggregate value of 4.2, but the percent favorable is actually four uh, four uh, per, per percentage points higher than the uh, higher than the aggregate. If we look at an instructor C, we see that they have an interpolated median of 4.3, which is comparable to the aggregate of 4.2, but they have a percent favorable of 100%. And that's reflected in, in the low dispersion of 0.24. Um, and this point will become clear when you look at an instructor D and B. They both have almost the same interpolated median, 4.6, 4.5. So they are on almost the same vertical line in terms of the interpolated median. In instructor D has a uh, sorry, in instructor D has a 100% uh, favorable responses, 100% uh, and a dispersion of 0.25. Whereas in instructor B down there has uh, a percent favorable of 73%. So about one in four students did not rate their experience favorably. And we can see the difference between the two is in the dispersion index. Um, dispersion index for B is 0.57 and for D is 0.25. So we see here for a given interpolated median in this upper quadrant, uh, for a given interpolated median, the higher the dispersion, the lower would be the percent favorable. Um, in the lower sub in the lower quadrant, the, the relationship is actually the opposite. The higher the dispersion, the higher will be the percent favorable. So if we look at a, an interpolated median of three, we see that there is a few points ranging from just over 30% to about 42, 43%. So the higher the dispersion index, the higher would be the, uh, the percent favorable in this subquadrant. Uh, by and large, uh, uh, and from our experience in the last few years, about 90 to 95% of responses are in the upper right quadrant and about five to 10% in, uh, in the lower quadrant. Uh, this brings me to the end of, uh, of my presentation.